Hi guys, and welcome back to another Magical Voxel tutorial. In this one, we will be taking a look at part two of texturing floors. So let's go ahead and get started. As always, I will leave a link in the description below so that you guys can compare your work with mine or use these floors in your own scenes. So the first thing you want to do is to go ahead and delete the cube and to go up here where you can change the object size go ahead and drop it to 79 by 79 by 2 and with that you can go ahead and i usually don't use perspective view it's a little bit finicky and you can't zoom in at certain points so i'm going to use orthogonal view for this go over to palette 3 and go ahead and attach the we're going to go ahead and do the first floor what we're going to do is select one of the palette colors. Let's call this floor one. For now, we don't have to give it a color. Just go to face mode, attach, and press once. Now over in color, select that. It should open up a new box. And then go ahead and change this color to whatever we would like. Once you have done that, go ahead and switch over to a new palette color. And go over to box mode and turn on mirror mode for X and Y and go ahead and find one of the corners and just left click drag out. So you have four squares that are divided by a line. And to make it a little bit better, go ahead and delete the corners as well so that you have a overall big square and within that big square, you have four smaller squares. Now we can go ahead and give this some color. Let's go ahead and with this palette color selected, go ahead and change the color to whatever you'd like. Once we have changed the palette color, we can go ahead and take a look at it. Obviously, if you like to go for this, you can, but in my opinion, it looks a little bit bare. So I'm going to add a little bit more pattern to this. Go back to model view and select a new palette color. And with mirror mode X and Y enabled, just go ahead and find like an area that you want to create a pattern and just draw it out. I'm just drawing a simple square within a square and giving it some depth like so. And obviously this doesn't look anything close to other two colors we have here so we can change this color to whatever we like now that i've gone ahead and done that i'm gonna go ahead and import a basically a light source to get a better look at my figure so after getting uh, a light source in and taking a look at the floor we just made i think it looks pretty good you can if you'd like go ahead and give it a material so you just select one of the colors and go over here and maybe change it to blend and give it a little bit of a shine. I wasn't really going for much of a shine here because it's not good, like a metal or anything. So I can probably just leave it like that. Probably put it back to the fuse and then, yeah, that's the first floor. Let's go ahead and do the second floor, which is the wood. So with the second floor, Instead of creating a new object and setting the default, uh, values of 79, 79, and 2, like we did for this floor, we can actually just press tab to go into the world view. Hold left shift on your keyboard and left mouse click drag one of the arrows. And when you do that, it duplicates that object. Now, if we press tab, you can see the value is set to whatever this was. And we can just delete it and start our new floor. Again, like the first floor, I'm going to call this floor two on a new palette line. And for the wood, we're going to go ahead and create lines that go all the way across the length of the object. And you could do this one by one, but you can turn on one of these axes mode and in box mode attach. You can go ahead and just left click once and it places the whole line. You have to figure out which one actually places it on the correct axis. So you can, it's either X or Y. And to make this even faster, you can hit Control A, select all of it, Control C, 
and then control V and then uh, holding down control on your keyboard and left mouse click drag, you can drag out the selected region. We can do that again. Now we're gonna do basically this shape again, but um, going the other way. And what we can do is you can either go to this, turn on Y and do the same thing all over again. Or a faster method is to go back into world view by pressing tab, hold on left shift and left click drag up, rotate it by using the plus and minus keys on the keyboard. And now we can select both these objects by holding shift, select both of them, and then press U on the keyboard. And now we've combined it to one object. That's pretty neat. We're going to give this entire base a wood color. And then we're going to give the top wood a little bit of texture. So we're going to select just the top part and to do that. Go up into orthogonal view if you're not in it already. And then this cube, as you're dragging, you see this cube, just click the face like that. And now you can see it's directly centered like that. Go to marquee select, turn that off and left click drag the top portion. And you see we select the top portion and we're going to create a new color here. And with this new color, go ahead and move a few colors down and select your other color. We're essentially creating a gradient. So we ideally want one darker color and one lighter color. Like so. Now hold Control and Alt on the same time and left click drag. Now you created a gradient. So we still haven't given this selected region a color. Left click drag, select the four colors here and right click, hit random. Now you can see that the four colors have been applied to the selected region. And you can see it's not very, the colors that I picked aren't really matching this at the bottom. So I'm just go ahead and change that and get back to you when I'm done. All right, I think I'm done with that. We can go out here and check out our work. And with wood, it has a little bit of shine. So I'm gonna copy this light source and bring it over here and adjust the colors. Or not, sorry, adjust the actual shaders. Now that this light source is brought over, we can go ahead and give this some uh, shine. So just go ahead and select the top portion, which is these four colors here. Go over to blend and we can turn on transparency all the way to max and press S for subsurface scattering. Now you can see it's a lot darker. It looks a lot more like wood, but it's, I think it looks a little bit too shiny. So maybe you can turn on the IOR, maybe increase the roughness and just play with these settings until you find something that you like. So I think that looks pretty good. And there you go. You have a simple textured wood flooring. Let's go ahead and move on to the next floor. So now we're going to go ahead and create um, some tile flooring. Let's go ahead and select a new palette color. And I want to look a little bit closer. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to drag out a square. Make sure it's a perfect square. And now I'm going to give it some texture. I'm just going to texture some of the outside. I'll have something like that. Select both of them. Control C, Control V, and drag it out. Till I have something like this. And do the same. Till I have something like this. Now we can go ahead and uh, color this space. Create a new palette color. Drag it in like that. Maybe make it a little bit lighter. And do the same over here and over here. Now we can duplicate all of this and drag it across.
If it's not perfect, that's okay. Let's go ahead and fill in the gaps like that. Okay, now we can go ahead and duplicate this just by dragging it down, selecting all of it, and just bring it down. Like so, just keep repeating. And if it clips over like that, just go ahead and fill in the gap. Tile flooring has a lot of shine, so I'm just going to select all these um, colors that I use for the floor. Maybe give it a metallic shader. So we have something like that. Again, if you see like it's not perfectly, see it's like cut off, just go ahead and fill it in with the appropriate line color. So there's that, there's your simple tile flooring with a little bit of uh, texture. Let's move on to the sci-fi flooring. Again, like with the texture flooring, the sci-fi flooring is pretty simple. We just had to make one and just duplicate it across. So we're just gonna go ahead and create a simple square and give it some texture. This could be whatever you'd like. And it's not actually a perfect square, so let's bring it in like that. Okay, with that, we can go ahead and just bring it all up by one. Like so, and just duplicate this multiple times. And just like the uh, tile flooring, leave a little space right here. And again, all I'm doing is just holding on control. Um, hitting control C and control V and left click drag out. So it's going to clip over. So what I want to do is just copy some of it do that and copy like a little strip right here. So I have it like that. Uh, and now we're going to fill in this gap with a different color. Maybe just pick a white, go to the face mode uh, and hit attach and select the empty space right here. And we're actually gonna trim that a little bit so it's symmetrical. Now that we have our light source, let's go ahead and give this, uh, I'm thinking of a metallic shader for the top right here. So it's these two colors. Go ahead and give it metal texture. And I specifically made a little gap with uh, a lighter color here because I'm going to give this uh, a light shader or a light material. So to select this palette color, just hold down Alt on your keyboard and left click the color. Go to Render. Go over to Material in the Matter section. Hit Emit and give it an emission. Don't go too high on the power because uh, if you go too high, it becomes very blinding and that doesn't look realistic. Now we have something like this. I'm gonna have a color that matches the blue more. We can just do that, changing it down here. And if your light looks a little bit different, that's because blue might be turned off. If I have bloom turned off, you can see it looks a little bit more stagnant, the light. So with bloom turned on, it gives it a little bit of a pop, just to make sure, just make sure you have, um, you open this drop down and uh, adjust your mix and size levels. And I think that looks pretty good. So with that, we have four simple flooring that you can make a magical voxel. And the intent is just to give you ideas on how easy it is to make floors in magical voxel that can really make your scene stand out. And with that, I hope this video has helped and I'll see you all in the next one.